I'm starting a new sermon series this week called Stewarding My Life. Who is a steward? A steward is a person who manages and utilizes the skill sets, talents, and resources that God has blessed him or her with. That's who a steward is is praise the lord number two a steward is a person that recognizes that all that he is and all that she has he or she would one day give account of it unto god what i mean is that that all that i am and all that i have i'm just a steward of it and one day i will give account of my stewardship on it unto god in other words whatever i have the resources the relationships the skill sets the education i have the accesses that have been granted unto me i will one day give account of my stewardship so i want to speak today briefly on serving god the secret to my elevation first john chapter 2 verse 4 to 6 english standard version whoever says i know him but does not keep his commandment is a liar and the truth is not in him but whoever keeps his word in him truly the love of god is perfected by this we know that we are in him whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which we walk exodus chapter 23 verse 25 to 26 exodus chapter 23 verse 25 to 26 message translation but you you serve your god and he will bless your food and your water now god starts speaking i will get rid of the sickness among you there won't be any miscarriages nor barring women in your land i will make sure you live full and complete lives there won't be any miscarriages no barry women in your land i will send my terror on ahead of you and throw those people you are approaching into a panic all you will see of your enemies is the backs of their neck and i will send despair ahead of you it will push the hevites the canaanites the hittites out of your way king james version and you shall serve the lord your god he shall bless thy bread and thy water i will take sickness away from the midst of thee there shall nothing you know i like the king james king james doesn't limit it says nothing it means your goat will not lose their babies your sheep will not lose their babies your trees will not lose their fruit most of the time our challenge is that we don't know how god works the way god works is different from the way men work so the bible says lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him he shall direct your path god will do all so it means recognize god's place and how do we recognize it god says you shall he didn't say you might he didn't say you may he said you shall that one means we i'm not here to argue with you you shall serve the lord what is my responsibility i've come to know brothers and sisters serving god is the most is the cheapest way to be great serving god you don't have to struggle the word of god says sickness i recognize is in the midst of you but i will take but before i take you must serve me brothers and sisters we move from places to places looking for anointing oil looking for a country there is no a country anywhere serve the lord see all my life i've served god i am a secondary school liver i married a doctor why have they written it because as i'm serving god i'm writing my phd in serving him so by the time god saw his level you know god had to let her go to school because she has to come to my level my level is phd in serving in the house of god so god had to bring you in phd so that we have something in common child of god hear me if you want elevation from god see focus on serving god with your time your talent your treasure just serve god serve god and you will lack where people are, are lacking he says in ghana he has money child of god hear me 
There are so many things we fast and pray on that we don't even have to do it. Clean the church. Wipe, wipe, w- wash the washrooms. Eh? Come and clean the place. Eh? See, volunteer to do something for God. Serve God. You will never lack. The only time pastors start getting sick is when the pastors start serving their own interests at the expense of God. Sometimes you may feel weakness in your body. But if you would ignore the weakness and still commit to God, he would take the sickness away from him. Bishop Oye, the post wife, was sick to death. He traveled 26 times preaching. He said, God will not heal my wife. It's not my problem. Sick to death. Oh, oh preaching. See, if they didn't tell us, we wouldn't have known. Every day he's in church. He's preaching here. He's preaching there. He, he's not staying home because, hey God, I'm serving you, my wife. The word of God says, you shall serve the Lord. He will take the sickness. He doesn't tell us when we serve in week one. He said, you serve. Focus on the serving. He will choose when to remove the sickness. What do I do? I focus on serving God. Hear me. When God starts blessing you, that is not when you stop serving God. Though. So, small money starts coming to people's pocket. They start becoming arrogant. Hey, do you know who I am? It's a shame. You now have 100,000. That's your level. This 100,000, it doesn't even buy fuel for somebody's jet. Kaki cry and pack your car, my car. No, 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 no. Leave my car here. I want to sit here. We are crossing. Listen, serve the Lord. Whether he, you are rich or not, serve the Lord. You see, when somebody commits to serving in the church, it doesn't mean the person is cheaping themselves. It doesn't mean the person is subservient to you. Listen to me. If you want to be great in the house of God, serve God. Serve. My heart is for God. My resources are for God. How does God take barrenness from us? Is it by prophetic direction? Is it by fasting and prayer? Put the scripture there. What does the scripture say? There shall nothing cast your young nor be in thy the number of your days is it my prayer to go and pray so that god will give me more years to live what must i do what must i do is it my responsibility to go to a man of god to do prophetic direction so that i'll live long what must i do you shall do what serve the lord there shall nothing cast your young nor be buried in the land the number of your days are for I will send my fear before thee I will destroy all the people whom thou shall come when you are afraid of people that is a hostile competitive place when God said you must serve me God is saying have a stake in me so that I take the full responsibility to change your life for the better have what? a stake in me Serving God means having a stake in God. And how do you do that? By utilizing your resources, your times, and your skill sets to serve the interests of his kingdom. When God says you shall serve the Lord, what God is saying, there is something I have to do for you. But I cannot do it until you have a stake in me. And when you have a stake in me, when you give me your money, I will outgive you. When you give me your time, I will make sure you will live long. Look at how he puts the things. He says the number of your days are multiplied. If you give me your days, I will multiply the days you have served me with. Are you getting it? He says if you have invested, whatever you invested, your time, your talent, your resource, whatever you could have invested in your business by invested with me, I will multiply it. So, he said, I will send hornets before thee, which shall drive out the Hivites, the Canaanites, the Hittites from before thee. Who does the driving out? Is it you? Is it your prayer? Is it your fasting? What does it? Serving the Lord. Some of us, we are wise. The Bible says, and do not be wise in your own understanding. Proverbs 3 verse 35. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. It means that when you don't live by God's principles, you are hurt. I didn't say it too. It's in the Bible. Matthew chapter 7 verse 24. He says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and does them, I will like him unto a wise man. So when I hear God's word and I obey, I am a what? Which built his house upon a rock. The rain descended, the floods came, and the wind blew. Now, look at it. The rains did what? And what followed the rain? 
So do you know that the fact that you are in God's will or you start serving God and blessing starts doesn't mean problems will not come. Rain stocks of blessing. But with the rain comes a flood. With the promotion comes. So you will come into a relationship with somebody. Good relationship. But with the relationship comes problems. But when you serve God and you are living by the principles of God's word, you know that you have to forgive. You know that you have to endure hardship as a good soldier. The person is annoying, but you manage the person. Love your neighbor as your... You see, whatever you sow, the Bible says, do not be deceived. God is normal. Whatsoever a man sows, so shall he re- you, Serve God. You can raise your hand and say, man of God, I will do it. I will groom you, train you. You start doing it. So if you, they do something, like, hey, I'm feeling shy. All of us were shy. The Bible says there must first be a willing heart. He says that the floods came, the winds blew and beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and does them not shall be likened unto a foolish man. So some of us we hear God's word, but we are I didn't say it. We don't do it. So if you don't do it, we are what? He said, but everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and does them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon the house. It means that even when you don't do, good blessings will come. But when the flood come, <laughs> foundation, there's no defense, it will break. John 15, 16. He said, you have not chosen me, but I've chosen you. And ordained you that you should go and bring forth food. And that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. God says, I have called you to go out there and bear fruit. How many of you are adding value to people's life? How many of you spend time to pray for somebody and talk to somebody about Christ? How many of you are concerned about people who are around you and inviting them to church? It's just you and Sunday, you come to church and you take it. You don't serve God. You don't do anything for God. Every day, they're complaining, traffic. Is it not the same traffic you go through every day to work? Don't you go, but you come to church twice a week. And the twice a week, you are either tired or there's traffic or the fuel in your car is not enough. So you use the car tomorrow. So you choose that tomorrow's event over God. Or somebody must give you a lift and the person didn't show up so you won't come to church. Why should God go beyond himself to be a blessing to you? Job chapter 36 verse 11. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. What do I have to do to spend my days in prosperity? I obey God's word and I... Sister, listen. Some of you are looking for men who are well to do to marry. You don't need it all. If you get, thank God, but you don't need it. What you need is obey God's word, serve him. He says you will spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure. Sometimes young guys, young guys, they start seeing 1,000, 5,000, 10,000. They they grow ass. They don't want to come to church again. They have time for everything by God. Hey, they can give commentary on football who is coming. They don't even know five scriptures. Five. They, They can't even memorize five scriptures. Everything is, oh, oh, I went to a, escort somebody to a funeral, to a birthday party. God's time. You have given it to somebody's birthday party. It is when you have nothing to do that you come to God. Then when he has nothing to do, he will hear your prayer. Because he created us in his image and likeness. So the way we are, so is he. The Bible says, as he is, so are we. So when you choose every other thing, or when anything competes with God, and you will not sacrifice for God, come to God. I say, first service, when you close quickly, he say, oh, I will come, but I do something in church, so you show up. Serving God guarantees a turnaround in my business. Luke chapter 5, verse number 5 to 8. Jesus used Peter's boat, and after that, he said, please launch out into the deep. And when he did that, and Simon said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, what was he doing? He was serving the interest of God by his boat. Do you have a boat for God? Your body is for the Lord. If you cannot give God your body, even if it is weak, he has no responsibility fixing it. Because you are not giving it to him anyway. Your life must be so valuable to God that when you are not there, a big vacuum will be created. We will miss you. There are a lot of people now. When you are here or not, we don't miss you. Because you have made us know that you are not important to God. Please write this down. Serving God makes 
you a star in the kingdom serving god makes you a star on earth in the kingdom of god and did that be wise has shine as the brightness of the firmament so when so when i obey god's word to do it i become a star he says he says i become wise when i serve god i become wise and then i shine in the brightness of the firmament the firmament means on this earth see he separated the firmament and called one earth and one heavens he so so on this earth i become a star that's why i'm a star i'm a superstar i don't need i don't need to be a celebrity I, am i not a star are you not a star wherever what do you mean by a star when i show up i am distinguished among many when they are favoring people well, they will favor me and they're giving preferential treatment they look at you and like what's your name ah i like your eyes everywhere you go pastor disappointment and failure ask 90 percent of people who say disappointment and failure whether they do anything for god but when you serve god favor from god rests upon you right this now when i commit to god he brings exaltation to me psalm 89 verse 23 to 24 no verse 20 i have found david my with my holy oil have i anointed next verse with whom my hand shall be established my arm also shall strengthen what was david's qualification he was a servant i have found david my somebody who serves me what am i doing for him i'm anointing his head my hand is strengthening the enemy shall not exact upon him nor the son of wicked afflicting so when the son of wicked is afflicting you it is because you are not doing what verse 23 and now beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him but my faithfulness and mercy shall be with him and in my name shall his horn be exalted this is what god does for everybody that david is no more so why did god write the scripture it is for you who feel for bay for no it is God who deals with them. Yours is to serve Him. Yeah, no, I be for now. Sorry, fire, fire, oh, and I draw a better man with hand crumb on. Fire, oh, fire, oh, hey, me feel for be for. No, no, God said that is not your work. He gives sleep to His beloved. That's what the scripture says. Put that scripture there. He gives sleep. So yours is to sleep. What is my responsibility? Serve. Who does the beating of my foes? God. We are not doing we are not serving god and his interest see we have we have turned the scriptures upside down just serve god he will beat them he will strengthen your hands he will anoint your head with oil he he says look at it it is vain for you to rise up early to stay to sit up late to eat the bread of sorrow for so he gives his beloved sleep psalm 127 verse 2 you see serving god especially when one is challenged such as in difficult situations when you have issues with work family and career pays the most write this down when you become a servant of god miracles follow you isaiah 45 verse 1 to 5 when you become a servant of god miracles follow you look at the scripture he says that says the lord to his anointed to cyrus whose right hand i'm holding to subdue nations before him and i will lose the loins of kings to open him the two living gate and the gate shall not be shut i will go before thee make the crooked way straight i will break in pieces the gates of brass cutting asunder the bars of iron and i will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden secrets of secret places that thou mayest know that i the lord which call thee by name i am the god of israel for jacob my servant's sake and israel my elect i have even called thee by my name all that god is doing by a persian king it is for the sake of jacob god's servant god will let people gather money and you bring it to you because you are a servant if not you will gather and give it to the wicked you have to choose choose which one you want this man george he came to me and said papa allow me to serve you please give me the permission to serve in your church allow, give me papa please please suffer my man small me 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 this is my church. Allow me to serve you. I look at the guy. Say, the impression I me. Allow me to serve you. Say, what can I do in the church? Me, so for the baby, I didn't be shabby. Me, 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 me. What are you saying? You want to be served, or it's just what you will get? Some of you, some of you. If they don't let you sing in the choir, you won't sing because. You see, it's not serving God. Who. They want, they want to be seen. They want position. Whatever you are, close your eyes. Close your eyes and pray. God, I want to be a servant. 
I've come to know your word. What are you doing for God? Will you serve the interests of God? Lift a prayer unto God. Say, Lord, I commit to fully serving you. The Bible says in Proverbs 8, 17, I love those who love me. And those who seek me diligently will find me. The Bible says in Psalm 16, verse 11, You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Save the Lord. Save the Lord. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 11, 13 to 15, If you faithfully obey the commands I am giving you today, to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, then I will send rain on your land in its season, both autumn and spring rains, so that you may gather in your grain, your new wine and your olive oil. I'll provide grass in the field of your cattle, and you will eat and be satisfied. Serving God supplies the provision of God to you. Serving God supplies all the provisions of God that you need for your exaltation. Serve God serve god and his interest serve god and his interest serve him pray god i will serve you i'll serve you with everything we need me my time is yours my money is yours my talent is yours lord nothing will compete with you and your house and your work and i'll choose that thing. i would always 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 choose you in jesus name Amen.